Hello, today we're going to take a look at what we call volume by cross sections. Now, very simple how we find the volume by cross sections, we're going to look at the base. So today we have to focus on the, air, the base of the function right here. Now, and notice in this case, our base is a circle. Now, a lot of different volumes or three-dimensional shapes have a circle for a base. For example, a hemisphere has a circular base. We have other shapes that have a circular base. A cone, for instance, has a circular base. We also have cylinders have a circular base. So every single one of these has the same base, but if you notice, they all do have different shapes. Now, what gives them their shape is what we call the cross sections. Okay. Now, what we mean by the cross section is, imagine if <coughs> we have a line coming down from here. We took our shape, our, our sphere, let's say, and we slice a little piece of it, like so. Now, if we look at that cross-section profile, we will notice that that cross-section is a semicircle. So what that's telling us is, if we have cross-sections that are in the shape of semicircles, we're going to get a hemisphere. Now we have different types of cross sections. Let's imagine we had a cone. Well, let's say we slice the cone to get a cross section. In this case, so there's my cross section right here of my cone. But if I turn to profile, you notice it's a triangle. So triangles, if the base is a circle, gives us a cone. Likewise, for a cylinder, well, here's my cylinder. If I drop my, if I cut my cross section, in this case, our cross section, turn it profile, is a rectangle. So, different bases will give us different shapes depending on what we call the cross section. Now, basically, what a cross section is, it's a piece of our function, it's a piece of our, uh, the base down here. So what we're going to do, how we get this very simple, just like we did with area, we're going to drop a rectangle. Now that rectangle represents my cross section, like so. Again, it's going to have a thickness, dx, and to get the height of that cross section, it's going to be the top minus the bottom. So if the top function is a circle, and so is the bottom function of the, is a circle. So it's going to be basically like f of x minus g of x. So the area of my rectangle, which is right here, is going to be f of x minus g of x dx. And there's my area. Now, but to get the volume, we have to get, now that's just the volume of this little sliver. In other words, that's kind of like right here. There's my height. It's very thin, dx thin, and that's what we have here. To get the volume, we look at the cross section itself. The cross section, and notice in this case, is a rectangle. So if I draw my rectangle, like so, at the very bottom is our base, dx thick, hold on, it's dx thick, down here is the base, that's the bottom, remember that base, that's our cross section here, it has a base of f of x minus g of x. To get the height, we'll just call that h. So the volume of my cross section, which is what I want, is going to be the air, it's going to, excuse me, get the volume, it's going to be this f of x minus g of x times dx, the area of the base, times the height, times h. This is area of the base 
times the height. So the total volume, if we rewrite this, we'd like the dx to go second, is going to be h times f of x minus g of x dx. h is probably just going to be a number right here. And now that's going to give me the volume of my one cross section. But what's going to happen is we're going to have lots of cross sections as we go from left to right. So we integrate that to get all of the cross section from A to B, depending on uh, the domain. And that's how we find the volume of a cross section. Now, different cross sections will have different formulas. For example, a semicircle, we have a different formula for that as well, which we'll talk about in part two. So if you have time, go ahead and go to part two, and we'll take a look at some more.